let us start our new chapter that is current electricity in this chapter first of all we will see the concept of current so current is basically defined as flow of charge per unit time that is we can say if a delta q amount of charge is flowing in a time interval of delta t then we will have a average current and that is your delta q upon delta t and this particular delta q will flow through a cross sectional area that we call it effective area which is perpendicular to the direction of current flow that is our average delta q upon delta t average current for instantaneous current if limit delta t tends to zero delta q upon delta t that will be our dq by dt and that we call it rate of flow of charge with respect to time and that is our instantaneous current rate of flow of charge with respect to time is our instantaneous current dq by dt from here also we can say that this dq is equal to i dt and if you are integrating this two then we will get the net flow of charge if we have current as a function of time if we know the current as a function of time then for a particular time t what will be our net flow of charge which has flown we can calculate from this integral and from here also we can conclude that if i versus t graph is given if i versus t graph is given then the area under i versus t graph then the area versus i then the area under i versus t graph will give you the total charge flow in this time 0 to t or from t1 to t2 whatever with the limit the total charge flown in this t time interval we can calculate area under area under i versus t curve gives total charge flow gives total charge flow so this is basically the average current and instantaneous current now the second important thing regarding this current is current is basically your scalar quantity it is a scalar quantity although we uh, this current has magnitude and direction it is a scalar quantity why we are showing uh, saying this because this current does not follow the basic vector law or that is your triangle law of vector addition for example let we have a, a wire having current i1 and there is a wire having current i2 if we arrange this two wire in this fashion then a wire joining this point a and b does not have current i1 plus i2 this is not possible so scalar quantity because it does not follow this triangle law vector addition we can say although uh, this current has direction as well as magnitude now come to the uh, next quantity that is your current density we can say current density
this current density is our vector quantity it is a vector quantity a vector quantity how we are defining this current density uh, j symbol is j j is basically current flowing per unit area and what is this area a is our effective area effective area which is perpendicular to the direction of current flow it is an effective area which is perpendicular to the direction of current flow this is our effective area uh, for example let there is an area s and the direction of current flow is like this this effective area s makes an angle theta makes an angle theta from vertical then j while writing j we will write i upon the effective area which is perpendicular to the direction of current flow this s is not perpendicular to the direction of current flow we will basically take the projection this is s this is theta then the effective area which is perpendicular to the direction of current flow is our s cos theta this s cos theta this area is your s this area is our s this area is our s and the projection is this s cos theta this is s this is theta so current is basically our i upon s cos theta here is our j we can also say that i is equal to j s cos theta and what is this j s cos theta it is the effective area which is perpendicular to the direction of current flow then i is we can say it in dot form j dot s vector here current is a scalar product because it is dot product of two vectors j and s it is dot product of two vectors j and s now what is this s in gauss law we have already know the area vector which is always perpendicular to the area s so a unit vector which is always perpendicular to this area will give the direction of area vector we will take the dot product of this j and s we will get current i now what about the direction of j the direction of j the direction of j direction of j is the direction of current flow so whatever be the direction of current flow the direction of j we will take is in the same direction so in this we have defined two terms basically one is current that is average and instantaneous and other is current density which is a vector quantity okay now next proceed our lecture and that is our the next concept is that is generation of electric current in a conductor generation of electric current in a conductor in a conductor there are free electrons which are which are responsible for conduction of current but is 
free electrons only the criteria of current flow let's say that let us take a conductor this conductor has so many free electrons the free electrons density is very high for a conductor these all free electrons have random path if i am just taking only one electron from here and i can trace the path of this free electron it has a random path here and there so free electrons are randomly moving in an isolated conductor free electrons are randomly moving in an isolated conductor so if we take any particular cross sectional area if we take any particular cross sectional area let's say a in this conductor if we take any cross sectional area so the charge density is very high so whatever be the net flow of charge from left to right is same as from right to left then observer here will see there is no net flow of charge through this cross sectional area because whatever be the charge from left to right in this direction the same equal and opposite charges is moving from right to left so there is no net flow of charge through this cross sectional area and by definition of current if there is no net flow of charge through this cross sectional area we can say that there is no net current so i is zero as no net flow of charge through a so if we just take a inside the conductor and since the electrons have very high density so they are moving randomly whatever be the flow from left to right is same as flow from right to left so we have no net current now what happen if we are connecting this isolated conductor <coughs> by a potential source let this is potential source v now this conductor isolated conductor this isolated conductor i am going to connect this with a, a potential source v for this potential source we have a positive and negative terminal and due to this potential source there is an electric field e across the conductor under the influence of this electric field this randomly moving electrons will experience a force will experience a force e into e now due to this force now due to this force these electrons will redirect themselves under the influence of under the influence of electric field electric force e into e randomly moving electrons will redirect themselves and 
now for any cross sectional area of the conductor there is net flow of charge there is net flow of charge because now electrons have unidirectional motion you know? so if electrons have unidirectional motion then always if we will take a cross sectional area we will find there is a net flow of electrons and we can say that there is a net flow of charge also there is a net flow of charge also so i will be we have i here due to net flow of charge so this is how a potential source work or have a role in conducting a current in an isolated conductor there is no current although we have free electron but whenever this conductor is connected with a battery source then this battery source will redirect the electrons due to the force e into e and we have a current